you know, this little trap could talk. Boy, the stories it would tell. You know, I've been trapping for a long time, and I've tried a lot of different setups. Big traps, small traps. If you're a deer hunter, serious about getting the predators off your property, or, you know, a trapper wanting to load up the fur shed, this little setup would be perfect for you. This week, we're headed to the hills of Pennsylvania. I'm going to show you my PA line. We're going to trap some coyotes. We're going to head across the border. We're going to go with my good buddy, Nate. We're going to try and take some coyotes off some property we deer hunt out there. Stay tuned. It's trapping time. Trapping. An art form that has stood the test of time. A heritage built upon hard work, dedication, and pride. Rooted deep with the main goal of conservation. We, as trappers, live this history 365 days a year. With the help of some great friends, along with the love and support of my family, I'm carrying on that tradition. With all the pitfalls that I may encounter, the rewards more than outweigh the costs. Many of the greatest trappers in history have etched their name in time. This is my story. This is my time. This is trapping time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Vapple at VappleProducts.com Jeb's Chokes at Jeb'sChokes.com Blind Turtle at BlindTurtle.net Smokey's Deer Lures at SmokeysDeerLore.com Blackwater Hunting Services at BlackwaterHunting.com Southern Ohio Outfitters at SouthernOhioOutfitters.com Big Game Gut Glove at BigGameGutGlove.com Dakota Line Snares at DakotaLineSnares.com PCS Outdoors at PCSOutdoors.com Duke Trap Company at DukeTraps.com Deep South Trapping Lures at DeepSouthLures.com Webster's Predator Control at Shop.WebstersPredatorControl.com Little Whiskey Girl at LittleWhiskeyGirl.com Wolf Creek Products at WolfCreekProducts.net Southern Snares and Supply at SouthernSnares.com and Console Energy at ConsoleEnergy.com Well, Nate and I are going out and checking some trap. We set them about two days ago. It was kind of warm, but now we got this cold front coming in, so let's spit a little bit of snow. So hopefully these, these dogs are moving. And this is what you want. We know it's going to be cold for the next three or four days. We want to keep our traps out, keep them operational. There's no rain in the forecast, so we're not going to have to worry about our traps firing or anything. So the longer you can leave them out when it's cold like this and keep them firing, the better chance you've got of getting some fur in them. Now chances are we're probably not going to catch any coons or possums today unless they rain early last night. It was about 30 degrees till right before dark. You may catch one or two that moved early, but for the most part when it gets cold like this, they're going to hole up and the only thing that's really going to be moving is your, your canines and even your cats. So just have to hang out and see. We got us a yoke. Big old coyote. This set here is a dirt hole. I actually caught one in last year. Adam checked my trap for me last year and I caught one in here. And Nate and I were setting some water traps and we drove by it and the bait was actually taken out of it. So we rebaited it up last night with some Smokies Fox and Coyote bait. We got him. Awesome. We got a snow coming in now and the dogs are starting to move. That sight never gets old. When we come back, I'm going to give you a closer look at the set that did that coyote in. Ooh. 
Who better to get your trapping supplies from than trappers who know what you need in the field? Come on in! PCS Outdoors is one-stop shopping for name brand trapping, predator hunting and calling supplies, shooting and pest control gear at discount prices. A lure for every animal you'd be targeting. PCS Outdoors stands above the competition. Quality Asabo brand snares being made here in Michigan. Go to PCSOutdoors.com for great selection and prices that'll make you want to stock up for your next trapping or outdoor adventure. The trophy moment only lasts a couple of seconds, but the story will be passed on for generations. They only see the glory, not the sacrifice. But I don't wait for my tall tale of glory. I handcraft my journey from start to finish. They don't see what goes on behind closed doors. An epic saga is worth a thousand words. My story boils down to three. Little Whiskey Girl. Save luck for the weekend hunter. Hey folks, welcome back. You know, we deer hunt this property a lot, so I know Nate's going to be tickled to death that we took this fawn killer out. <laughs> We caught this coyote here in a dirt hole. It's just an excellent spot. It's the end of this big long field. It's just like in real estate, location, location, location. We, we hit this coyote here. The, trap, the second day these traps have been out, there was a coon that had worked this set yesterday and we rebaited it up and now we caught a coyote. He's a real good looking dog. He probably is not going to bring much on the fur market because on the top of his back he's been rubbed and what causes that when they're coming in and out of their dens their fur rubs back on their guard hairs and they're not worth as much but we deer hunt this a lot so anytime we can take one of these out of here we probably save 10 fawns well he's in there good it just proves too we use a 175 trap that is plenty of trap for these coyotes it's awesome for coon and it's a good fox trap we blew through it's frozen ground we blew through it and was able to get this coyote. This is a dirt hole set, and a lot of times what we have to do after we catch a coyote one, he's gonna tear it up. I mean, luckily this ground's pretty frozen. It's not near as bad as it, it could be, but he's tore the dirt hole. As you can see, this hole was way back in here. With him clawing and pawing and everything, he's actually dug this out. So this is what I call a modified dirt hole. What we're gonna do, we're gonna dig the dirt hole out a little bit more, and then we're going to bed the trap right in here. I'm probably looking at about now that this hole's been blown out. I like to usually be six to seven inches from the edge of the hole with my trap. Well, that's not going to happen on this one because I'm already chained down. I don't want to dig the stakes and stuff back up. So. I'm going to move it back a little bit. It's going to be a combination of a flat set as well as a dirt hole. So if you look at this, we're probably looking at, now we're probably eight to nine inches away. So when this coyote comes in to work this set, he's going to be standing back. The hole's more straight down now. So he's going to have to, when he steps over, we're going to be able to nail him as he tries to work this set. We're going to take some nails. This ground's pretty froze. Because we, this coyote's tore this up so bad, we're going to have to uh, try to find some way to pin this trap down. Up there went in pretty easy. And don't worry about the uh, trap firing. The trap will fire with these nails. It made fire right here where I'm trying to set it. So as you can see, this trap's not going to wobble, and that's what you want. These coyotes come in here, or, can, or any of the canines, especially bobcats, they feel this trap wobble, they're out of there. It's not natural. And because we use peat moss instead of regular dirt, we're going to cover this trap up. I don't use pan covers. There's no need for it. I set my traps to fire at like a sixteenth of an inch. Because I'm using soft material, I don't have to worry about it. The trap will still fire. And then we're just going to kind of blend this in. Now we've got this light snow coming. So like I said, within a half hour, 
this is going to be covered up and you're never even going to know this ever was here. And don't worry about making them pretty. This ain't a trap setting contest or set making contest. It just doesn't matter. We want this. I like this place looking tore up. That's a finished set. We'll lure it up, put some bait in it. We're ready for the next one. Right there. So I did it. Fox and coyote bait and Smokey's Matrix Coyote playing a little. I wouldn't go anywhere. If you're addicted to coyote trapping like I am, we come back, we're gonna take you to one of my honey holes in Pennsylvania. Plus, we're gonna show you the set of the week. Come back, we'll tell you what that's all about. Do you need a blind that will keep you warm on a cold winter day? Do you need a blind that won't blow away on a windy fall afternoon? Do you need a blind that will never wear out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need a Blind Turtle Hard Shell Hunting Blind. This solid one-piece unit is perfect for deer hunters, turkey hunters, archery hunters, and gun hunters. Put it this way, if you hunt, the Blind Turtle is perfect for you. What do you demand in a quality knife? You want a knife that works as hard as you do. Weeby knives are made for trappers who want efficiency and perfection. The Weeby Elite double-edged fleshing knife has one edge that's ultra sharp, and the other side has just the right edge for pushing fat and meat for perfectly fleshed furs. And don't forget about the Weeby Wicked Sharp, the planet's sharpest skinner. When the blade goes dull, simply snap on a new one, and you're ready to go. Find them at dakotalinesnares.com. Welcome back to Trapping Time. You know, every week on Trapping Time, we're going to provide a segment that we call Set of the Week. And what this entails is we're going to bring trappers from all over the country. They're going to show us one of their favorite sets. They're going to break it down from start to finish and show you why that works for them. You know, trapping is a bit of a solo sport. So anytime you can pick up a little bit of information from another trapper, you know, there's different avenues to do it. Television, you know, the internet. This way we can take a trapper from, say, from Mississippi who can come in, show us how he makes a set, and we can compare it to the way we set traps and maybe pick up some information even though I'm in Pennsylvania. This week we've got John Chagnon from PCS Outdoors. He's in northern Michigan. He's going to show us one of his favorite sets. John Chagnon, PCS Outdoors. It is December 29th and we almost got a New Year's uh, fox, but looks like a real nice red and he's caught in an MB550 at a dirt hole set. He's nice and furred. A nice red fox. Caught in an MB550 by the back foot. A little bit unusual, but we'll take it. We get this remade. It was uh, in the low 20s last night, but we had peat moss on the set and dry. So even though it rained a few days before that, uh, we made a nice catch. Okay, we're gonna remake this set. Got some dry peat moss in the bucket. And I'll lure it on my way back home today after work. We'll just get the thing rebedded, so all I gotta do is put some gland lure afterwards, but I've got a small hole there. I'll be uh, rebedding this 550. Put a little peat moss down in the bottom. That bed's just large enough to cover the trap. For those that have never seen a 550, basically got a night latch system and don't have a clean trap with me, but I'll 
replace that tomorrow. Rather have this trap working tonight, especially after catching a small female. And that tucked in there. And cover her up here with some moss. Moss dry. Even though it's freezing, that set will work tonight. January the 2nd, 2015. Um, we got a nice gray fox in a dirt hole set. Uh, this is the first fox of 2015. It's the same location, we caught her red. Week before that, we had a coyote there, so it shows how uh, taking the time to remake a good set will keep producing. Uh, besides being a good travel way, uh, there's a bayou that goes all around this 20 acres and a canal up the center and once it freezes, like it's 10 degrees this morning, uh, it allows all these uh, canines to start traveling the waterway and this is a passage in between the waterways and in addition to that we had put our beaver carcasses during the year back in the corner here and uh, pretty much the canines are taking a trail um, heading in probably 50 yards in the brush there, but we're getting them here before they head to the uh, uh, bait pile. Up by the bait pile, if we made the set there, uh, we would get incidentals like skunk and possum. We could still get those here, but uh, the likelihood's a lot less, and um, we're doing real good catching canines, and this is something we do every year. Um, once I get a certain number of reds, grays, and coyotes, I'll actually pull the traps out uh, probably before the end of season, but I'll keep these traps working uh, most of the winter by just simply uh, I'm using peat moss and anytime the It rains or if the weather gets above freezing um, I replace the peat moss with dry peat moss when I see there's a cold front that'll keep it frozen because when the grounds frozen uh, that peat moss won't pick up any moisture and it'll keep these traps functioning and like I said I've done this uh, for the last five years on this piece of property. Thanks John. When we come back we're going back to my home state of Pennsylvania where we're going to put one of these babies to use. The Big Game Gut Glove is revolutionizing the way big game hunters and trappers are successful in the field. The 26 inch version fits over your elbows and protects you and your expensive hunting clothing from blood or cold water. They're made to fit your hands from extra small to extra large. What I like about them, I can feel with them. Existing products on the market don't give you the feel or protection you need. Wet or dry, the special non-slip grip bonds tightly to whatever you're handling. The Big Game Gut Gloves are reusable so you save money and promote going green. Where'd you get all that stuff? DakotaLineSnares.com. I bet it cost you a fortune to ship all that. Nope, not DakotaLineSnares.com. It's $9.95, flat rate. It doesn't matter what you get. Dakota Line Snares and Trapping Products has everything you need right at your fingertips. Our warehouse is packed with trapping supplies you need to be successful on your trap line. And with flat rate shipping of $9.95 on all orders, you get your money's worth. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to put my order in at DakotaLineSnares.com now. In 2011, the world of shotgun chokes changed forever. Bobby Sears took his Jeb's Head Hunter Precision Choke Tube to the NWTF Wild Turkey Still Target National Championships and brought home the gold. Shortly after, the Game On team got on board. By stacking the shot in front of the wad cup inside the choke tube before it exits your gun barrel, Jeb's can extend your effective range way beyond anything you've ever seen. So don't get worked up about a turkey that's just out of range. Ruin his day with a Jeb's Head Hunter Choke Tube. I got it set up here. Every year I move this trap back, and this year I said, you know, what? I'm moving this up so I don't have to walk out there unless I got something in it, and I can check it from a distance. And a lot of times with your canine sets, if you can check it from a distance, it's even better. But 
I've got something in it. I caught a big bobcat here a couple years ago. Real nice coyote. And once we get out here and we take a look at it, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's, it's like a sagey field and there's just like a little hump here. And I always see coyotes on there. There's always droppings and everything right there. And I just moved my trap down over the hill a little bit. And I think that one there, I used some old yellow eyes from uh, deep south lures on that. It was just a little dirt hole. Now I'm just using a 175. I switched the chain out, but uh, as you can see, I got more and enough paw in here this coyote's not going anywhere earth anchored him in and as you can see when we came up here there's a little knoll here and these coyotes like to come out here and they howl because they're right at the top of this hill and I've caught coyotes and bobcats here in the past it's just a really good place to, to make a set but uh, this is a young coyote which is kind of a good thing that means a pretty decent population of them here he looks like he's been fighting a little bit so I'm guessing there's probably some other ones that came upon him while he was in the trap. So we're going to dispatch him, get him taken out of here, and then uh, we'll remake the set. And anytime you can catch one coyote, it's always a good thing because usually there's another one right there. What we're going to do, take all this fluff, get it back out of here. We're going to end up using it to our advantage. We're going to kind of pile it up. Now, this coyote's been here all this time, peeing and pooping and just doing everything. So he's got some serious, serious scent around here. So these other coyotes, when they come in, they're gonna investigate this. So this, we're gonna play this to our advantage. Right there, there's droppings. This coyote's been in here. Throw them off to the side. We'll use them here later on. But all right, we've got most of this fluff, as I like to call it. Get it out of there. Now we're gonna take and kind of work the bed up a little bit. Get it all loose. This trap's still in good shape. It doesn't bother me that the dye's off the trap too much, only because there's enough scent of everything else around here. All right, got our trap set. We're gonna place it back down there. Now this dirt hole here was a little deeper than I normally go. This one here's probably two to three inches, but we wanna make sure it's solid. So, a lot of you guys have watched my YouTube stuff and even my instructional DVDs. If I got a trap that can't get solid, or if I'm in a hurry, I'll just take a 16 penny nail. I like the galvanized ones because they won't rust, but I don't even, don't worry about boiling them. Everybody's like, Robbie, how, won't that keep that trap from firing? No, that trap's gonna fire right through here. As you can see, that coyote there, I had a full pad catch. He wasn't going anywhere. So we got our trap bedded in here I don't have time to look for dirt because we're trying to move now normally if I was just resetting I'd be already be out here but doing this for the show we're gonna show you try to break it down a little bit it's gonna slow me down a little bit a lot of guys cover their peat moss up some don't it doesn't matter whatever you're into I've had success both ways so what we're gonna do now is We've got this. I carry a little garden rake with me because these coyotes and even these cats, they'll pad this stuff down. And they get that stuff packed in there. It doesn't look natural and it makes your dirt hole seem exceptionally deep. So, scrape that up and just bring all this stuff up here. Basically, we just made one major, major scent mound. Now what we're gonna do, we'll leave this trap set here for a day or two. If we don't connect again, I'll make another dirt hole right on the other side of this, but I'm pretty sure we'll do all right. Keep the deep south thing going. Little hot shot red fox. We'll give it a shot of that right in there. And that should do it. You know what? We're gonna throw a little K2 
canine hitter back in there again. Find us something to. There it is. Let's take care of work. We don't need a lot of scent because we've just had a coyote in here for about a few hours tearing the place up. And that's it. That's a remake. We'll get the coyote out of here. And now I'm super excited because I just know these coyotes are going to work this set again. You know, trapping coyotes is my first love. Whether you're an average deer hunter trying to control a few coyotes on your property or you're the guy out there trying to fill up his fur shed, my technique and system of catching coyotes will make this happen for you. You know, coyotes aren't some mythical beast that can't be caught. You know, with a few simple steps, anybody can catch them. Each week on Trapping Time, we're going to bring to you raccoons, foxes, bobcats, beaver. We're going to show you all, step by step, what it takes to, to get them and get them home. So until next time, we'll be keeping the tradition alive right here on Trapping Time. Remember to set your DVRs every Tuesday at 8.30 on Dish Network Channel 266. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at Trapping Time. I personally am going to list every week the conventions, the events we're going to be at. Also, we're going to be posting videos, anything rela trapping related that's going to make you a better trapper and help fuel your trapping addiction. I'm telling you, this is going to work. I can make anybody that wants to be a trapper, I can make them a trapper.